fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver, let go be Canyon City was made up of a few stores, the main office of the Damon Stagecoach Company, and a hotel that catered to travelers who had to wait sometimes several days for accommodations on the stagecoach. Jake Parker ran the hotel and spent most of his time behind the counter in the lobby. He was there when Jim Blake entered and slapped dust from his well-worn clothing. I guess you don't remember me, do you, Mr. Parker? Your face is familiar, and I never forget a face. Now, let me think. I spent the night here in your hotel one year ago. Name's Jim Blake. Yeah. From your clothes, I'd say you'd been prospecting in the hills. Yeah, you're right. Any luck? Oh, fair to Midland. I spent most of my time panning streams and hit some good ones. Glad to hear it. You aim to stay in town? I guess so. How long does it take for the stage to get from here to Carsonville and back? Well, it used to take two days in each direction. What do you mean, it used to? Uh, Sometimes it takes longer now. It's been some Indian trouble. Paiutes have attacked a few of Damon's stages. Paiutes? Well, I thought they were peaceful. Didn't they sign a treaty? A treaty? (laughs) But they've attacked one of the stagecoaches three times in the last few months. Is that so? It's got so Damon won't be responsible for shipments that are lost... So if you're figuring on sending your gold to the bank in Carsonville, you'd better think again. Oh, I can't carry it around with me, especially with so many owl hoots in town. What do you mean, so many owl hoots? Crooks, gunslingers, men with their guns tied low. Oh. Those two gents sitting over in the corner, for example. I'd bet anything they live by their guns. And I saw lots of others just like them in the street. As long as any man can pay for what he buys in my hotel, I don't ask questions. Now, I've got to get my gold to the bank in Carsonville. It's the only safe place. I hope it gets to Carsonville. Well, I'll ride with it to make sure. How soon does the next stage leave? Find that out from Damon. His office is at the far end of the street. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Blake, it's quite true. We have had some trouble with Paiute. In spite of the peace treaty they signed? I uh, wouldn't say that Paiute as a whole have broken the treaty, but a band of them has been making it hot for my stage line. Well, I... I wanted to send some gold to the bank in Carsonville. I'll wait and give you a receipt, but in the event of Indian attack, of course, I cannot be responsible. I'm going to go with it. As a passenger on the stagecoach? Yeah. Well, that's up to you. You have to pay full fare. I'll pay 
In that case, you might as well carry the gold with you. There's no use having me take charge of it. Well, you have a strong box on the stage, haven't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that might give me a little more protection. Well, the stage leaving this afternoon. Ah, good. Here's the dust. You'll have to weigh it. Stage will leave at 3 o'clock. I'll be here. A few minutes after Jim Blake left the office of the stagecoach company, Jake Parker came in to call on Damon. Oh, hi, Jake. Glad you came. I have something to discuss with you. So a young prospector named Blake leave here. He's shipping gold on this afternoon stage. Yeah, what's it worth? Over $5,000. Hmm. Worth going after. <laughs> yes, he's sending it at his own risk. He's going to ride the stage himself to keep an eye on the gold. Pass the word to the boys, will you, Jake? Tell them to get rigged out as piutes and watch for the stagecoach. Well... What's the matter? Damon, I've been wondering. We don't want to overwork that Piute Indian business. Well, we may hear about it and come to see about the Indians breaking the treaty. What of it? Who can prove it's not the Piutes that stick up my stagecoaches? Couldn't the boys do it without dressing up like Piutes? I want the guard and driver, as well as any passengers who might be on board, to describe the attackers as Indians. That throws suspicion off our own boys. I think the guard and driver should be in on the deal. Well... Huh. Just that many more to pay off. God might shoot one of our own men. Lefty and the other boys know they must take that risk. Furthermore, I've warned the guard to avoid starting gunplay that would lead to his own death as well as the death of the driver and passengers. Now, don't tell me how to run my business. I'm not. I just... You won't... just take care of the hideout and the costumes, Jake. I'll do the rest. <laughs> It was later that same afternoon when the stage left Canyon City to head for Carsonville with gold belonging to Jim Blake and several other men. The horses followed the familiar trail through the hills for over an hour. Jim Blake and another passenger were inside the stagecoach, and a guard and driver rode on top. Suddenly, an Indian war cry rang out through the hills. It's Indian! Fires! Right in! Open fire! Oh, oh, oh. Those redskins are firing at us. They're shooting over our heads. They won't kill us unless we start killing them. Yeah, the guard is right. But they'll rob us. Yeah, they'll rob us anyway. You won't save your cash for dying. The guard and driver stuck their hands into the air as a small body of men in war paint, wearing the clothing of Paiute Indians, rode in fast to surround the haunted stage. The attackers worked quickly, and with the efficiency of a well-drilled team, they dragged the guard and driver from the box, and the passengers from inside the stage, and took away all weapons. Then they smashed the strong box, loaded the contents into saddlebags, and rode away. There goes every cent I have in the world, all my gold dust. There goes a solid year of hard work. Yeah, we're lucky to be alive. You, God, why didn't you fight? Why didn't you let me shoot him? That wouldn't have helped any, Mr. Blake. We might have drilled one or two, but the others would have killed us in short order. Yeah, and Mr. Damon told us not to risk flies by shooting. Well, why doesn't the government step in? Why do they let those Indians break a treaty like this? Hey, look over there. Yeah. Coming from other direction. War Indians. Just one Indian. And others He's are... masked. Yeah, more robbers. Well, at any rate, there's nothing left for them to steal. Just two of them. We could get them if those piutes hadn't taken our guns. Yeah, let's get in the stage and make a run for it. Uh, you think my team could outrun those two horses? Not a chance. We may as well stay right here and tell those critters they came too late. Oh, no, 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 no. You're too late, mister. We've already been cleaned out. The piutes robbed us. Anyone hurt? No, but I'd sooner have a bullet in the shoulder than lose all that was stolen. You may as well shove on, Al Hoop. We got nothing left to steal. You're jumping to the wrong conclusion. We came to investigate the gunfire and offer help. Huh? You say Paiute Indian hold up stage? That's right. Yeah. Well, where did they go? Well, that way, toward Canyon City. Yeah, and if you'd have been here a minute earlier, you'd have seen them riding over yonder hill. The sooner we get back to town, the sooner the marshal can get a posse out to hunt them. Mind if we get aboard the stage and get going? Search us if you don't believe we've been robbed. But be fast so we can get started for town. I don't want to search you. But you mean we're free to go? <laughs> you really do think I'm an outlaw, don't you? I'll tell Mr. Damon the stage is coming back. You'll tell. You mean you're going to town? We may see more of each other. 
Very Uh, Be ready. Come on, The Lone Ranger and Toto reached the edge of town without catching sight of the men who had attacked the stage. They found a suitable campsite in a woods where Toto waited while the masked man rode to the rear of a row of buildings where he left his horse and entered Simon Damon's office. Damon's face registered surprise. Uh, Who are you? My name wouldn't mean anything to you, Damon. I wear this mask because there are men who would shoot me on sight if they recognized me. Oh? What do you want? First of all, I want your confidence. It will help if you've heard of me. I'm called the Lone Ranger. What? You? The, the Lone Ranger? Well, I I can't believe that. I can show you a silver bullet and my horses in back. You might recognize silver from descriptions. Other than that, I don't know how I can prove my identity. In any event, please listen to me. Yes, yes, I'll listen to you. There have been reports that Paiute Indians have attacked your stagecoaches. That's true. It may be true that your coaches have been attacked, but it was not the work of Paiutes. I... How do you know? Because I've investigated. I came here directly from the Paiute village toward the east. Mm -hmm. Those Indians have a lot of respect for the peace treaty they signed. They're proud of their status as law-abiding people. They would put to death any of their tribe who displayed any form of violence. But I have eyewitness reports. Passengers who were on the stagecoaches, as well as my garden driver. It would not be hard for white men to disguise themselves as Paiutes. You only have the word of the Paiute leaders. Oh, more than that. Your stage was attacked this afternoon between here and Carsonville. It was. My statement will be confirmed within an hour when the stage returns. The men who attacked it looked like Paiutes, but they came directly here. I see. Well, how do you know that? Their trail was fresh. Todd and I could follow it to the hard ground within a half mile of town. Mm, But not into town, huh? Several of the horses had distinguishing hoof marks. We may be able to identify them. Mm, I see. Well, now, what you say is very, very interesting. But have you given this information to the marshal? Not yet, but I shall. Unless you prefer to pass it on to him yourself. Oh, I'll be glad to. These crooks must be found and exposed before the Pirate Indians are involved in serious trouble that might result in the breaking of the treaty. Yes, I'll speak to the marshal just as soon as possible. He'll probably want to question you. I'm sure he'll want to meet you. Todd and I are camped in a clump of cottonwoods directly south of town. The marshal can find us there. I'll tell him. Meanwhile, we'll be looking for the horses with the distinctive hoof marks. Oh, wait, I'd like to talk to you some more. We'll probably meet again. Hmm, the Lone Ranger, eh? That's bad. I must do something about him. You alone, Damon? Oh, come in, Jake. Come in. You're just the man I want to see. Boys, got back all right. They've all checked in, turned over the gold they got from Blake. Jake, listen to me. A man went out that back door just before you came in the front. Uh-huh. He knows it isn't Paiutes who've attacked the stagecoaches. And he's likely to find out the truth about our game. We've got to get rid of him before he gets us. An army man? No, he's not in uniform. A lawman? He's not wearing a badge. Well, who in tarnation is he? Jake, the man we've got to kill is the Lone Ranger. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. When the Lone Ranger told the owner of the stage line that the highwaymen were not Paiute Indians, he didn't realize that Damon himself was the leader of the gang, nor did he suspect that Jake Parker, owner of the hotel, was Damon's right-hand man. The two conspirators knew that their security had to be bought by the murder of the Lone Ranger. Tonto had gone to town to scout for information, and the masked man was alone in camp when a horseman approached. Ho, ho there, ho, ho. Easy there. Hi there, mister. Hello. I reckon you're the man I'm looking for. They told me you were camped in these trees. Steady, boy. I've been expecting someone would come to ask questions. I kept the fire burning as a beacon. Are you from the marshal's office? Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, uh, see, will you sell your horse and come back to town with me? Marshal wants to talk to me. Very well. Easy, steady, silver. Well, you dump some water on that fire while I saddle my horse. That's right. So you're the Lone Ranger, huh? Yes. You can call me Lefty. You said you came from the marshal's office. Oh, yeah. I don't have a badge. I'm not a regular lawman. Just running an errand for the marshal. Oh? Uh, he sent me because he wants me to show you something on the way back to town. Oh, what are you to show me? Well, it's a cave in the hillside. The marshal wants you to look it over and see if you got any ideas about it. There. I'm ready. All right. Lead the way. Right. Now. Get up there. Lefty rode in the direction of town and approached a hill in the rear of the hotel. He drew rein and they dismounted near a dense stand of underbrush at the bottom of the hill. It concealed the entrance to a cave. Yeah, follow me. I'll show you how to get through the brush. Right. There. Now you can see the opening. It goes right straight into the hill. Dark inside. I got a bit of candle in my pocket. I light as soon as we're inside. We can dodge around some big boulders. This cave goes straight through the hill, slanting down a little bit. About 50 yards long. Over oh, there. there. Now you can see. Oh, a tunnel. Yep. It's what it is. A tunnel. And the other end opens into the cellar of the hotel. Now, you follow me. As the Lone Ranger followed Lefty through the tunnel, three men appeared from behind the brushwood at the mouth of the cave. <laughs> I'd like to follow along and see what happens. Jake told us to stand guard here at the mouth of the cave. You better do as he says. Oh, I ain't aiming to go against Jake's orders. Just the same, I'd like to be in the hotel cellar when the Lone Ranger learns that Damon is our boss. <laughs> That'd be worth seeing. <laughs> See the end of the tunnel's a wooden door. It opens into the hotel cellar. Well, what are we going to find there? We're going to find proof that what you told Mr. Damon is right. Those highway men weren't Paiutes at all. They were white men. The hotel cellar is their hideout. And that's where they keep their engine clothing. Now see if the door's open. Right. There's a light in there. Yeah, so I see. Open the door a little wider. Now step right in, mister. What? Go on, I'm holding a gun on your back. The boys are waiting for Get you. Get your hands up and come in here. Damon. Come here and meet Jake Parker, who owns the hotel. And the boys who robbed the stage coach. Holding his hands at shoulder level, the Lone Ranger took two steps into the room, then moved slightly to one side while Lefty came out of the tunnel. The masked man saw a large room with walls of stone. A flight of stairs at one end led up to a door that probably opened into the first floor of the hotel. In addition to Damon and Jake Parker, a half a dozen hard-faced men eyed the newcomer. Piled on a nearby table, there lay buckskin jackets and trousers, as well as headdresses typical of Paiute Indians. I seem to have played right into your hands, now, Damon. You marked yourself for death when you came into my office with the guess that the robbers were white men dressed as Paiutes. Hey, Lefty, where's the Indian? Indian? That's what I said. This masked man has an Indian pal named Tonto. Told you to bring them both. I didn't see nothing of a redskin in his camp. We've got to have Tonto. We won't be safe until both he and the Lone Ranger are dead. You're right about that, Damon. Tonto is just as determined as I to clear the name of the Paiute Indians. Go back and get the redskin, Lefty. Meanwhile, a couple of you boys disarm the Lone Ranger and take off his mask. You won't get Tonto. You're not even sure of me. 
With lightning speed, the Lone Ranger leaped behind Lefty, snatched the gun, and fired two shots toward the lamp. Get him! Stop him! Where is he? Get a light! His sudden move caught the others completely off guard. He was in the tunnel and slammed the door. Quiet down now! Quiet, all of you. Take it easy. He can't get away. The boys are watching the outside of the tunnel. All right, Pete, get a light. Joe, open the door. He's firing at us. Two can play at that game. Can't see him in the tunnel. He'll be able to see us when we get a light. Stand out of the line of fire. What about that light? I got another lamp up like it. Hey, boys! You at the outside, can you hear me? The masked man got away. He's heading toward your end of the tunnel. Don't let him out. We won't let him out. We got him stored up. The tunnel was studded with big boulders. The Lone Ranger ran into several of them as he hurried through the darkness. He heard Damon shouting to the men outside near the horses and knew that he was trapped. One bullet struck a big rock close at hand and splashed chips against his face. He crouched between two rocks, which gave him temporary protection from bullets fired at either end of the long tunnel. But he knew that his security would be short-lived. He's trapped, boys. He can't get away. How are we going to get him? He could shoot us if we went into the tunnel after him. Well, we're not taking that chance. Lefty, you go and get the Indian. I didn't see him in camp. Now wait for him. Bring him back here. We can use him to bring that masked man out of the tunnel. While Damon's men watched both ends of the tunnel, Lefty went up the cellar stairs to the hotel. He borrowed one of the horses at the hitch rail and rode over the hill to the tunnel's entrance, where he had left his own horse beside Silver. Ho, ho there, ho, ho. Easy now. I keep a sharp watch, boys. Don't let that masked man get out this end. Where are you going, Lefty? I'm taking my horse, and I'm going to get the Lone Ranger's Indian pal. Steady now. Get up there. As Lefty approached the Lone Ranger's camp, he saw a fire burning far brighter than the one he had extinguished earlier that evening. Hold, hold it, hold, hold. As he rode into the camp, he saw no sign of Tonto. The Indian appeared from behind a tree as the outlaw dismounted. Easy there. Don't get hands up. We got you covered. Hey, now, take it easy, Tano. I'm from the marshal's office. Well, what you want? I was here a little while ago to get your friend. He's with the marshal right now, helping solve the stagecoach robberies. You here a four? Why, sure, that's what I'm telling you. Now, put that gun down and take it easy, huh? How me know you tell truth about oh, Lone Ranger? I'd have no reason to lie. Oh, you got plenty of reason to lie. Huh? Now get hands up. Hi. Now, hold on. Now, listen, Tano. Me take gun. Now, uh, see here, the marshal ain't gonna like this. Marshal not like it. When him here, you hold up stage. Uh, what do you mean? You ride with outlaw. Now, you talk. Where, Lone Ranger? I, I told you, he's with the marshal. That's not true. Uh, somehow, you, you got the idea I'm one of the outlaws. Now, that's crazy, Tano. Three I don't... fine marks of outlaw horse. One horse got broken shoe. Same horse here in camp a little while ago, and same horse here now. So that's it, huh? Well, if you think you... Yeah. Stop! Now you talk. Now, wait a minute, Ingen. Wait, now listen to me. I, I borrowed that horse. Uh, I don't know... Uh, Where, Lone Ranger? Uh, Are you talking? No. Talk fast. No, 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 don't beat me. Don't beat me like that, Redskin. Do not talk. Me beat you. Flat. No, don't, don't. <laughs> Damon, Jake, and the other thieves had maintained a constant vigil in the cellar room, while others in the gang did the same thing at the outer end of the cave. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger was trapped between the two. It was nearly midnight when the door opened and Tonto appeared at the top of the cellar stairs. Uh, an Indian. Me, Tonto. Cellar, name Lefty, say you want me. Yep, that's right, Tonto. Come on down here. Him say... Masked friend here. You'll be with your masked friend in just a few minutes, Tano. Uh, get your hands up. Uh, here, what come it. Take his guns, boys. Get ropes on him. Uh, right. Now we'll get that masked man. Hey, you, back there in the cave. We've got your Indian pal. Do you want to come out peaceful or stay there and listen to him howl in pain for what we do to him? <laughs> me not howl in pain. Get him rope and be quick about it. Do you hear me? So did I. The marshal. Let him have it. That 
That's when broke loose, when the marshal leaped down the entire flight of stairs with other lawmen at his heels. Demon and his men went for their guns, but fired too fast. Their shots went wild. Then the marshal's men went into action at close range. Tonto jerked free and swung a hard fist at the nearest man. It was a hand-to-hand fight at quarters too close for further gunplay. The Lone Ranger could hear the action. He knew what it meant and rushed from the tunnel into the room to add his way to the forces of law. This is for you, Damon. No! The fight was quickly ended. Damon and Jake were bruised and beaten, and their men were in even worse condition. Line up there against that wall. Wait, hold, hold on, Marshal. There's a mistake. There was a mistake, Damon. And you made it when you tried to beat the law. That goes for you too, Jake. Marshal, we I got the whole truth from Lefty. Tonto brought him into my office and he spilled all he knows, including the fact that all the gold that's been stolen from the stagecoaches is in a chest right here in this room. Oh, that squealing double-crossing... Don't hold it too much against Lefty. You'd have squealed, too, if Tonto had gone to work on you the way he did on Lefty. Good for you, Tonto. Well, he made big mistake when him ride horse with broken shoe. Oh, that reminds me. Silver's on the far side of the hill. There are others of the gang. We went there first and brought in those crooks. Then Tonto brought Silver around tied him in front of the hotel. He's there waiting for you. Good enough. Come along, Tonto. Uh-huh. You find that cash, Blake? Right here, Marshal. Then that cleans everything up. Gosh, Marshal. If it hadn't been for that masked man, I... Well, I'd have lost all I got in the world. I'll sure be everlastingly grateful to you. And a tunnel. Jim, you're not the first to say that about the masked man. I guess you already know who he is. Yeah, I sure do. He's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.